Good day, everyone. I'm very glad to be here and very impressed what I've, with what I've seen so far of the Turkish um, startup scene. And one of the things that I've been hearing over and over again, and it's in line with what many people were saying this morning, is that they would like to see Turkish startups not only be leaders of what they do, but also be global leaders and establish their global footprint. So I would like to speak today um, about Blablacar's history and tell you how we managed to become a European leader at what we do and how we are establishing our global footprint. And I will start first by explaining what Blablacar does. So Blablacar is an online ride sharing service and it connects drivers who have empty seats in their cars with passengers who want to go the same way. So in Turkey, it would be like this. If I'm a driver and I'm going from Istanbul to Ankara, I would be paying 135 lira, more or less, for the trip. That's petrol, that's insurance, that's toll, that's depreciation of my car. And at the same time, I would have three empty seats in my car that I could fill with passengers. So I will put those three empty seats on Blablacar, and then three passengers who need to go from Istanbul to Ankara as well can pay me 45 lira each and drive with me in my car. And this means that I will be able to drive without paying for petrol, and the three passengers will be um, getting from Istanbul to Ankara for much less than they would be by taking the bus, and also faster since they would be saving a couple of hours. So Blablacar has managed to establish this very huge transport, transport network that is not only sustainable, but also self-organizing and incredibly efficient. And many of you right now are probably thinking that we're doing this. And you're very right. And you're probably, I mean, many, started, many people at the start um, were not very impressed, they were kind of scared of what we were doing, and they were thinking of these guys in their car, of smelly hippies, and to be fair, I wouldn't want to be with those guys in the car either. And other people were telling us, wait, so I'm going to be in my car with this guy, with an axe murderer, and to be fair, we wanted to avoid this. So we had to make sure we're nothing like hitchhiking, and we're not. Blah Blah Car is planned, it's paid, and it's trusted. So planned means that a driver will put his trip on Blablacar a few days before he travels so that passengers can then book their seats online. So it's paid. With, hit with hitchhiking, you don't have that. And also, it is trusted. Whenever two people travel together, they leave ratings for each other. So I will know how other people have traveled with the person I have traveled with and what their experience was like. So we you know, started off with a great product and we realized that we were actually onto something great. Within a few years, within two years, we managed to scale the community from two million to six million. People needed this. People were connected, Pe you know, petrol prices were going up. And tell me about Turkey, apparently, I mean, petrol prices, uh, petrol prices in Turkey are incredibly high. So really, people were wishing to use the service. And yet, there was one thing that we wanted to do, but we knew it would be very hard. And it would be to scale this very local marketplace to a global level. And it, it, that's because scaling your beyond your home country, if you're a local marketplace, it's very tough because you have to grow your market, market by market. And concretely, in Turkey, uh, sorry, not in Turkey, in Europe, you have a market that, that is very much different country by country. For instance, our drivers, they're very different in Spain as compared to France. In Spain, they will do a domestic trip. They will go from Madrid to Valencia. In France, our drivers will go from Paris to Lyon. I have to address those drivers differently. I have to build my community differently. And I also have to go be, um, through language barriers I have to go past PR barriers, and, and I have to apply different payment systems. Yet, we really wanted to become global. 
and we had the ambition to do it. So this is something I wanted to share with you today. And it's for those companies who have the ambition to do it. And we came up with something that we call, hold on, our dummies guide. Our dummies guide to scale global marketplaces for Europeans. And I will give you three reasons we think we managed to establish it and three recommendations I would like to give you. Number one, invest in your geographic footprint really early on. And that is something that many of us would have the inclination not to do. Because you all, most people try to establish their local marketplace and to have revenue before going abroad. Using Blablacar as a case study, I'll show you how this worked for us. In 2009, France was our home country. We had no revenue, and yet we decided to go abroad. Spain was our second country. It's a great country for local marketplaces. Beyond that, we went into the UK, and then in 2012, once we had proven our business model and we had revenue, we were already present in seven different countries where most local marketplaces would only be in one country because they would have waited to establish their business model and to conquer their first market. So really, past that, we decided to go even faster and went into Germany, Russia, and the Ukraine, three huge markets. So right now, the population we are covering is of 550 million. That's more than the US. And that's only within a few years of establishing our business model. And this, is, this has been crucial for our international expansion. Do it fast so that no one has, so that you are the first one entering all those new countries. Point number two, build real local teams very early on. This is a choice really. I guess that Blablacar being a company with 100 employees, it already functions like a big multinational. And it's logistically and managerially more complicated than if you were to keep one centralized office. But for us, we have realized that, hello? We've realized that it's a huge advantage to be able to address our, comp our um, different markets through local teams. So we have one team in Spain, another one in the UK, Poland, Italy, Germany, and Russia and obviously our headquarters in Paris. And really what we've managed to do by having local teams in each country is that we have created autonomy in all those countries. So we have local teams who speak the language, who've grown up there, who know the market extremely well, building those markets for Blavacar very efficiently. And we give them a lot of autonomy in order for them to grow as fast as they can. Very important for Blablacar, and I could only recommend it for other local marketplaces as well. And my final point, and point number three, is to create, and I'm, we really believe that creating this unified brand and culture very early on is ex extremely important, and I'll tell you why. We started off being really bad at this. This whole, you know, this whole brand thing did not work out well at the start because we were co-voiturage.fr. And that is the French description for ride sharing. So, um, so if you were to try to pronounce that in Spanish, you would get a you know you would get a little for what we're And if you try to say it in English, it goes something along the lines of coverturash. And earlier someone was trying to pronounce this in Turkish for me, but I'm not going to try to repeat that because it didn't go very well. Um, so beyond using Kuvaturage, we decided that we needed one name that works everywhere. And as Alira was saying earlier, it's a bit of a funny name, but we decided to call ourselves Blabacar. And our founders were not dark. This was done on purpose. And the reason behind it is that our product asks every member to describe themselves as being a blah, a blah blah, or a blah blah blah, depending on their level of chattiness. There you go. So that would be a total blah, blah, blah. And this has enabled us to not only create a brand name, we also had a very blah, blah centric culture. So we do blah, blah talks where everyone calls in to be updated about the latest news of the company every week. 
we have blah blah swaps where our employees go and visit other offices once a year for one week and we have international weeks because obviously by having different teams seven different teams we need a very strong coordination aspect so the whole team flies in four times a year that's a hundred plus employees at the moment to um, do workshops, work together, know each other, and build this company more efficiently. And finally, we have very and very multilingual team. So everyone speaks at least two languages, if not three or four languages. My three points being to build your geographic footprint really early on, to have local teams, and to be, um, create a very unified brand and culture in order to become a local marketplace at a very global scale. I was showing you earlier that our member growth has been huge in the past two years once we started going international. But actually, the really interesting point here is that once, when we were in France only, we did about 98% of our growth in France. And once we start, started to go international, we, um, we saw that we could, most of our members were actually coming from abroad. So I'm showing you here our um, number of new members joining every month. And right now, in only two years, we managed to scale from having more, most of our growth in France to only having 33% of our monthly growth in France and 67, so two thirds of it, coming from outside of France. And this is where our biggest growth potential lies. This is where we can grow fastest in the next few years, which is why the international expansion has been so important for us. It is not over yet. We're obviously looking at new markets. And Turkey is a potential new one for us. And we're looking for people who can help us launch this market or who can have, um, tell us, give us more insights about Turkey. So if you're one of those people, please come and find me, and I'll be very interested to talk to you. Thank you so much.